Hello and welcome to another Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Amata. Yes, it's still me, and yes, it's still me without the camera. For those of you wondering, Paul landed safely in Seattle. He is just currently getting crucified by the monster known as Jetlag. He has assured me, however, that he will be on fighting form for tomorrow, so you can look forward to your dose of Paul tomorrow. So, what do I have for you today, then? Now, yesterday I discussed some new details regarding the RTX Touring architecture as we had some new snippets from a yet-to-be-released white paper leak out earlier. We'll, of course, link that video in the description below this video. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend you give it a watch. So, I have some new Touring stuff for you today as NVIDIA has announced a Tesla T4, which is based on a Touring GPU for inferencing. And these specs are, as you would expect, rather monstrous. And it is obviously designed for things like deep learning and that sort of stuff is not really meant for you or I. Obviously, it's a Tesla. I don't think you're really expecting to put this in your gaming rig anytime soon. But it is designed to accelerate deep learning performance by a magnitude versus its predecessors and is also going to be delivering some pretty impressive performance for AI video applications. Now, according to NVIDIA's own figures, the... Tesla T4 is going to be twice as fast in video processing, enabling you to decode up to 38 full HD video streams, which just was not possible previously. Now, we do have a bunch of specs for this particular graphics card, and unsurprisingly, it's very impressive, especially when you keep in mind this is a single-slot PCIe form factor. So it is a Touring TU-104 GPU inside, and it has 2560 CUDA cores and 320 Tensor cores. It is delivering 8.1 T-flops of FP32 and 65 T-flops of FP16 mixed precision, 130 tops of INT8 and 260 tops of INT4. And all of this is achieved with a pretty damn low TDP of 75 watts. Now, I also have a bit of a statement here from NVIDIA regarding this, so let's get stuck in as it's, it's a little bit meaty. They say, quotes, the NVIDIA Tesla T4 GPU is the world's most advanced inference accelerator, powered by NVIDIA Touring Tensor Cores. T4 brings revolutionary multi-precision inference performance to accelerate the diverse applications of modern AI. Packaged in an energy-efficient 75 watt small PCIe form factor, T4 is optimised for scale-out servers and is purpose-built to deliver state-of-the-art inference in real time. As the volume of online videos continues to grow exponentially, demand for solutions to efficiently search and gain insights from video continues to grow as well. Tesla T4 delivers breakthrough performance for AI video applications with dedicated hardware transcoding engines that bring twice the decoding performance of prior generation GPUs. T4 can decode up to 38 full HD video streams, making it easy to integrate scalable deep learning into video pipelines to deliver, to deliver innovative, smart video services. Now, unfortunately, NVIDIA did not have anything for us in terms of how much this is actually going to cost or when it's going to be available, but I'm fairly certain that we can assume it's going to cost pretty much your firstborn child. So, unsurprisingly, NVIDIA are utilising there's some 10 years of hard work with the Turing GPU in multiple places. Not exactly shocking. They have done this repeatedly in the past and probably will continue to do this into the future because, well, why wouldn't you, to be fair? And this is just showing what Turing is really capable of, of course, when it comes to deep learning. Well, of course, the reveal at Gamescom was heavily focused on, well, games and ray tracing and all of that. It's hardly a shock that it does deep learning as well, because we have seen that also touted a fair bit by NVIDIA. And I guess this just shows what they could really pull off with this particular GPU when it comes to all things AI. But I actually have another NVIDIA thing to discuss today, and that is actually regarding DLSS. So what we actually have here is a few games announcing that they're going to be supporting the DLSS technology, which we also learned a fair bit about at their Gamescom conference. So we have some newly announced titles and we also have a list of titles that were already previously released. But let's focus on the new ones for this particular segment. We have Darksiders 3, Deliver Us the Moon, Fortuna, Fear the Wolves, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, Kinetic, Outpost Zero, Overkills the Walking Dead, Scum and Storm Divers. So not exactly small names there. Obviously, Scum is from Devolver Digital. I'm actually pretty hyped about that. I'm not going to lie. Hellblade has obviously been out for a while, but it is a fantastic game. Darksiders 3 is looking really good as well. 
uh, because The Walking Dead and so on, and they are joining some pretty heavy hitting names. I'm not going to read them all out, but we have such games as Ark Survival Evolved, Final Fantasy XV, Hitman 2, MechWarrior 5, PUBG, Serious Sam 4, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But the long and short of it is now we have 25 games that are going to be supporting DLSS and I would assume we're only going to be seeing that number increase as we not only approach the launch of the RTX 2080 and of course 2080 Ti, but as more and more developers get to grips with that technology, perhaps new games will be released that can uh, use it that games already released can't, that sort of thing, and as with any new technique it's going to take some developers time to get a grips with it and all that, so... I would fully expect to see this supported more, but of course I could be wrong. But it is still nice to see a fairly healthy selection of games this early supporting this technology. So let's move on from Camp NVIDIA to their arch rivals AMD. Now this is just a brief follow up to the things that I discussed in yesterday's video of course where there was an interview with the AMD CEO Dr Lisa Su and CNBC where she touched on a few things. And now I just kind of want to follow up on that as the main thing that is definitely going to be interesting out of all of what's going on with AMD, obviously where we're very interested in, in Ryzen and, Zen, and what's con continuing with Zen, Zen 2 and all that, and obviously Vega 7 NM and Navi and all that, but where AMD are really going to be gaining ground against Intel is going to be with Epic and of course the follow-up Roam. And the main reason that I say that is because, well, the market for servers has grown rather massively, to say the least, that it has grown from 18.5 billion to 22.5. And obviously, AMD's main sort of thing here is offering a high-performance product at a price you can actually afford. So, well, Epic is not really meant for you or I, nor neither is Rome going to be, it is exactly what these sort of companies want that are in the server market. It is something that's going to give the power and brute force that they need without actually breaking the bank. And when you're seeing increases like the one I just described, you can kind of see why it is very, very important for AMD to be gaining ground here. And why, of course, it's very bad for Intel that they're losing ground here, especially when you keep into consideration the manufacturing supply issues that they are having with 14nm. And we actually have a little bit of a statement here from DRAM Exchange about the supply gap for Intel and they say quotes the precise reason behind the shortage of Intel CPUs is currently unclear because the problem simultaneously affects the newly arrived CPU product lines and product lines that have been in the market for some time. The effective products include the improved version of 14nm++ and product lines based on the 14nm++ Coffee Lake platform which has been in mass production for half a year and is one of the solutions for mainstream models in the notebook market. The lack of supply for existing CPU product lines is having a significant impact on the notebook market as a whole. Trendforce estimates that the CPU supply gap in the notebook market has increased from around 5% in August to 5-10% to in September. There is a possibility that the supply gap may extend to over 10% in the fourth quarter of 2018 and the shortage is expected to be resolved rather later in the first half of 2019. And this kind of ties into the comments that I discussed yesterday from Lisa Sue, where they cannot rely on Intel floundering and all that, but they can absolutely capitalise on their various woes, which are fairly numerous. Obviously, they've had a bit of a hit with the whole Spectrum meltdown things I discussed yesterday, and obviously the manufacturing supply issues that I've just discussed. But the long and short of what I'm getting at here is that the server market is growing insanely fast, and as, as great as the take back we've seen from AMD, the comeback, you know, the underdog comeback from AMD with the whole with Ryzen and all of that, and the future that we are seeing for Zen, and the expectations that we now have of them in the CPU market for the future, it has been the server market where we have seen them gain the most ground, and this is definitely where Intel are going to be feeling it the most, because as I said, it's a very, very lucrative market. But we're going to finish things up today with a bit of a benchmark leak for the Intel i9-9900K. So let's skip the introduction, shall we? I think we all know what the 9900K is at this point. So what do we actually have in terms of a benchmark? Well, it is for none other than TimeSpy. So let's get stuck into the actual results. We have a score of 10,916 and 36.68 FPS again on time spy so in terms of the cpu tests it was tested by another user who 
tested it with a clock speed of 4.8 gigahertz on all cores and we see a score here of 11,459 and 38.50 fps again in the cpu tests but that's not all we don't only have time spy for you today we also have a geekbench 4 benchmark having surfaced on the internet we see another listing for the 9900k here and this is at 5.10 gigahertz across all eight cores and this was on an asus rog maximus x hero motherboard and we see a single core score of 6528 and a multi-core score of 36180 so let me know your thoughts on this one guys obviously the 9900k excuse me is looking interesting but i do kind of raise a question of how impressive it actually is versus the 8700k you know if you already have an 8700k are you actually going to be upgrading that sort of thing but again as i just said you kind of need a full suite of tests to get a full picture there but that is me done for this video let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything discussed here you will find some links in the description below this video do check those out for your perusal and I'll see you next time.